Good morning and happy Lord's Day to you, brothers and sisters, everyone who's going to be joining me for this word. Um, let me hope that you are having a great day and you're going to have a greater day um, as a result of this. So let me just wait for some of y'all folk to get on and to um, encourage you with this word and then let you get about your day. I hope the day has been going okay with you so far. I hope God has been very good to you. Hope he's been keeping you. I see you, Sister Kathy. Good morning, sis. God bless you. Thank you very much for, for joining. Um, I see some mothers are coming on, trickling in. God bless you all. Um, this is not going to be like a, a regular study, of course. I made the post... Um, uh, last night and said it's going to be a sermon and so expect that i see brother nashawn richardson sister riri uh, wilson god bless y'all um, as y'all know i wear many hats um, sometimes i'm just um, calmly teaching at times i'm doing apologetics sometimes i'm just doing some uh, encouragement. Sometimes I'm just being a little funny. And then sometimes I'm all fired up and, and preaching. Now, I am well aware that uh, not every aspect of my ministry will, will suit the needs of everyone. Um, not every aspect of what I do and how I do, depending on the um, occasion or what I'm involved with, with will be your, to, um, everyone's liking or suit. Um, that is quite understandable, right? And so if you like an aspect and you don't like some other aspects, uh, I don't mind that you just focus on those aspects that you like, right? Um, or if it is that it's just not your, your suit at all, then, you know, um, find somewhere else, someone else who can, who can satisfy your needs, uh, whatever those may be. But... Um, don't expect me to, to not be who I am, though, to not um, be myself in um, respective contexts and do what I do, just because you may not jive with um, a specific aspect of my ministry and what I do, all right? So I um, just want to put that out there. Um, while I do appreciate the love and support and everything, um, don't think that I'm, I'm going to not be who I am and the way that I present and do things where scripture and apologetics and teaching is concerned because you may find, um, you know, an aspect that that's not particularly your style. All right? We, 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 all, we all roll differently. We all present, preach, and do all of that differently. And so when I'm, when I'm in preaching mode, it's it's different from when I'm in apologetics mode, and that's also different from when I'm in just teaching mode as well. And you just have to know me. You just have to understand me, understand um how I roll, how I do things, and I guess the kind of animal, if I may use that popular phrase, that you get uh, when I'm in a specific kind of mode of operation. All right, I see my bro Leonard Suggs. Nice to have you, bro. Um, those of you who, who um, think somebody may be blessed by this word this morning, just go ahead and um, share this video, uh, maybe in a group or on your um, page, so that your other friends who maybe are not my friends can watch it as well. And there are others who were interested, but they may not have seen the not notification yet. So, um, you know, just go ahead and, um, and share it so that those who... Um, we don't have a church that they are in right now can um possibly be blessed by the word this morning i see uh nelson davil jr joining god bless you bro thank you so much for um, uh coming on um let me just wait on a couple of more folk and we're gonna get right into it i i have a good word for you um this morning brothers and sisters and those of you who maybe like to take notes and jordans um, you can do so uh, in the comfort of your home, of course, whether on your device or scribble down some notes, some things you may learn or hear or remember. Feel free to do that 
or if it is that maybe when the sermon is ended and you want to um uh watch the playback take your time and pause it to um jot down some stuff you can do that but um uh I, I I think it's going to be it's going to be very um encouraging for you. I think you're gonna learn a thing or two from it. And so I do encourage you to um pay keen attention. And uh, are you hearing me clearly? Just let me know if you're hearing me very clearly, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. Let me know if the volume is um is good enough. If I'm coming through very clear so that um y'all can um get it well i see pastors of dale smallwood thank you very much bro you know you know the word and preach <laughs> i will do what i do best i see my my brother kevin Benton jr uh nice to have you bro god bless you i i thought you supposed to be a church preacher now kev <laughs> but you just stopping by quickly man god bless you man thank you very much um kev for stopping by and i hope that you have a great one too bro you you did say last night you were going to be preaching yourself um, so I hope God really use your move upon you as he always do to be a blessing to um, the congregation um, this morning. Um, as you can see, brothers and sisters, um, the sermon is entitled, You're Not Gonna Burn. And it comes from uh, Daniel chapter 3. Uh, specific vo- vo- verses of focus is chapter 3 verses uh, 24 through to 25, where the Bible says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he uh, arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did not we cast three uh, men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, I see what you're saying, Kev. You're, it's nine for you where you are, and your service is at 11. Man, that's wonderful. So, so you're going you're gonna to get this word, and that's going to prepare you to preach your word. That is, that is awesome, bro. God bless you for that. God bless you, Sister Naomi. Thank you very much for, for coming on. I'm not going to burn. I know I can't hear you. There's no there's no feedback. Uh, you know, if I was in church, I would I would have probably asked you to to tell your neighbor I'm not gonna burn or you're not gonna burn. Well, I guess I guess you could you could type it up in the chat or you could say it if somebody's with you listening. You're not gonna burn. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. May you bless your words right now. May you bless our homes, my wife, my kids and every family represented here who are listening. May your people be encouraged, O oh God. May they be blessed by this word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're not going to burn. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, these were young men who were among the captives imported from Judah to Babylon in 605 BC. We are told in 2 Chronicles chapter 36 that God had given Jerusalem up for destruction and captivity because of uh, uh, the consistent disobedience, apostasy, unfaithfulness, injustice, and immoralities of the people. When they were brought to Babylon, brothers and sisters, We are told in chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, that King Nebuchadnezzar instructed his chief eunuch, Ashpenaz, to look among the Israelite captives for young men who were impeccable, young men who were handsome, who were knowledgeable, and perspicacious, who may be trained for a period of three years in the Babylonian language, literature, and affairs, so that having successfully completed their training and program, they may serve the king in the royal courts. Daniel and these three young men were among those who were chosen. And as is customary in ancient times, the king sought to change their identities to get them to forget their religion and country 
by changing their names. You see, Daniel's Hebraic name means God is my judge. El, the true and living God. El is my judge. That is changed to Belteshazzar, meaning Baal's prince. Baal's prince. Now, Bel was the chief Babylonian god. So even behind this story, the meta-narrative, brothers and sisters, is that we have a battle of the gods going on with respect to the changing of the names. The, the loyalties to the different deities are being uh, expressed and attempted by the changing of the names. So Daniel's name is changed from God is my judge to Belteshazzar, meaning Bel's prince. He's now dedicated to Bel when Nebuchadnezzar was concerned instead of to God, to Yahweh. Bel was the chief Babylonian god. Hananiah, his name means Yahweh has favored. That is changed to Shadrach, meaning inspired by the sun god. Mishael means who is like God. That is changed to Meshach, who is like Shishak. Shishak was the earth god. Azariah means Yahweh has helped. That is changed to Abednego, meaning servant of Nego. Nego was the fire god. And interestingly, beloved friends, we will have a showdown between Yahweh in the rest of this chapter uh, with uh, this fire god here. Instead of remaining dedicated to Yahweh, the true and living God, these, his servants, were rededicated by the heathen Nebuchadnezzar to the four living gods of Babylon. Bel was the chief god. Rak was the sun god. Shishak was the earth god. And Nego was the fire god. And when we look at what transpired with respect to the golden image and the fiery furnace, we're going to see a showdown between Yahweh and Nego, the fire god. Despite this name change and rededication of these young men to uh, the Babylonians' pagan deities, we are told in chapter 1, verses uh, uh, 8 through to 16, that these young men were resolute in their hearts not to dishonor Yahweh, nor to dishonor their religion, and neither did they forget their identities. They maintained their character. They maintained their integrity, and they maintained their loyalty despite the odds. And for that reason, chapter 1, verses 17 through to 21 lets us know, brothers and sisters, that God blessed them exceptionally with wisdom. He blessed them with knowledge. He blessed them with uh, understanding in visions and dreams uh, to the point that they were 10 times better than the best of the best in Babylon. They're surrounded by paganism. They were rededicated to uh, these pagan deities. They were expected to not be among the top, but because they maintained their fidelity to God, brothers and sisters, God blessed them in spite of the odds. And the, the lesson we can learn from this, my brother, my sister, is that like these four young men, you may be in an ungodly environment. They may change your name in attempts to change your devotion to Yahweh. They may change your name and try to get you to make you to forget your religion, to change your identity. But that does not have to change your character and your integrity. You can faithfully serve God where you are. Let me repeat that for you. You can faithfully serve God right where you are. 
in an ungodly environment, in an ungodly atmosphere, in unfavorable circumstances, you can still faithfully serve God. Your faithful service to God should not be dependent upon your environment. You should not just faithfully serve Him when you are in church. You should not just faithfully serve Him when you're surrounded by like-minded brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. You should not only faithfully serve Him when services are going on on Facebook and other media, social media devices and places like this. You should faithfully serve God right where you are. In your home, you may be the only believer. You should still faithfully serve him. At the workplace, you may be the only Christian. You should still faithfully serve him. Can I talk to somebody uh, this morning? In your community, it may be volatile. It may be ghetto. It may be rough. You should still faithfully serve him in the classroom, uh, in the university, uh, in the work environment, while you're traveling, brothers and sisters, um, on your vacation, wherever you are, you should still faithfully serve your God. They may change your names, but that still not should change your character faithfully serve him where you are stand firm against ungodly pressure and watch god bless you watch him give you wisdom knowledge and understanding like he did with these young men uh, watch him give you favor and excel you beyond your contemporary contemporaries and beyond people's expectations watch god God work in your life irrespective of the unfavorableness of the environment that you are in they may change your name they may attempt to try to change your loyalty and devotion don't make that change your character we are told in chapter 2 king nebuchadnezzar had a dream of an image made of several materials the bible tells us that the head was of gold the chest and arms were of silver the belly and thighs were of bronze and the legs were of iron while the feet the feet were a mixture of clay and iron the dream ended with a stone being cut out without human intervention and it struck the image at the feet and the entire image disintegrated and disappeared while the stone became a great mountain that filled the entire earth. Now the king had forgotten his dream but he commanded his wise men and astrologers and soothsayers to tell him both the dream and its interpretation. When they could not do that, the passage tells us he threatened to kill them all. When Daniel became aware of it, he begged the king for more time. He called his three friends and they prayed to God to reveal to them the dream and its interpretation, which God actually did. And through that, all the wise men of Babylon were spared. When Daniel and his friends revealed to the king the dream and the interpretation, chapter 2 verses 46 to 49 tells us that uh, the king blessed them with gifts. He promoted them and he made them chief administrators over all the affairs of the kingdom. When we come to the main passage of this message, brothers and sisters, Daniel chapter 3, we observe in chapter 3 verses 1 through to 7 that Nebuchadnezzar made an image entirely of gold. It was 60 cubits high and six cubits wide. In today's measuring standards, that would be 90 feet high and nine feet wide. He sets up the image in the plain of Dura, 
And he caused all the officials and his subjects in his realm to worship the golden image at its dedication. The Bible tells us the herald cried out the instructions that uh, when the music is heard playing, um, everyone must bow to the image and worship it. Um, and whoever did not bow to it will be thrown into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. It is interesting to note that in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, brothers and sisters... God had showed him an image of uh, different metals and materials that represented um, uh, successive kingdoms. His empire was the head of gold and the other empires that would come after it until last of all, um, the stone would have smashed the image to pieces and uh, uh, it would have become a great mountain um, that would fill the entire earth and that um, uh, would be the king of God himself the stone that was cut out of the mountains without human uh, intervention brothers and sisters was the gospel that is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21 uh, that uh, uh, the, the, he is uh, the stone and, and anyone who falls on him would be broken but whoever it falls on he will grind to powder he will um, grind to smithereens the stone brothers and sisters was Jesus and the gospel message that uh, when he come uh, he, he would disintegrate those worldly empires and uh, the gospel message the church the body of Christ uh, would be a stone that would eventually swell into a great mountain that no one would be able to stop Nebuchadnezzar understood this brothers and sisters with respect to what God was showing him about these earthly empires and the kingdoms and what God would finally do in Christ and the gospel until he eventually get rid of all of these unjust human governments and civilizations and separations and countries etc and he would build his kingdom he would build his massive empire brothers and sisters from people from all different nationalities and groups all over the world and no one would be able to stop his kingdom this is what God showed Nebuchadnezzar in the dream but as we are seeing in chapter 3 in defiance to this divine historical plan, Nebuchadnezzar makes the image of all gold to signify that his kingdom will last eternally. God had showed him that his kingdom was only the head of gold, but Nebuchadnezzar made the entire image from head to toe of gold to signify the eternality of his kingdom of Babylon, to signify that his kingdom will last forever. And irrespective of what God had said, he defied, he intended to defy this plan. He intended to perpetuate his kingdom. He's seeking to challenge God and to erase God's narrative and create a narrative of his own brothers and sisters. And just like Nebuchadnezzar, there are many people today who are attempting to challenge change God's narrative. They make stringent attempts at changing God's narrative on how we are saved there are many today all over the world who are seeking to change God's narrative on human sexuality on marriage on gender I wish I could keep it real with you today there are many who are seeking to change God's narrative narrative on what is marriage and the family and scores of other things just like Nebuchadnezzar but I at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that God's narrative will triumph. It may seem like these narratives are taking over now. It may seem like they are pushing God's narrative on the back burner and God's narrative is becoming irrelevant. But I submit to you as God sits high and looks lower, his narrative will triumph.
They may change, they may tamper, they may persecute those who stand for God's narrative. They may call us squares, they may call us weird, they may call us bigots and haters, and we have phobias and all sorts of other things. But I want to let you know, try as hard as they may, God's narrative will triumph. God's narrative will stand firm. God's narrative will stand till the end. Nebuchadnezzar tried to change God's narrative when he made this image entirely of gold. There are many who would seek to do the same, but God's narrative is the one that's going to weather every storm, every attack, every attempt, every corruption, every change, every meddling. God's narrative will stand triumphantly, eternally. We are told in verse 7 of Daniel chapter 3, that when the music began to play, everyone started to bow except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In verses 8 through 13, the Bible says the Chaldeans reported these young men to the king and brought them to him for a hearing. Nebuchadnezzar was enraged at their defiance. Nebuchadnezzar repeated the punishment for disobedience to them and said in verse 15, Who is that God who will deliver you out of my hands? From chapters 1 to chapter 2, brothers and sisters of the book of Daniel, we know that Nebuchadnezzar was aware of Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews. His statement is not made in ignorance, but in defiance. In verse 16, the Hebrew young men responded by affirming God's ability to deliver them. They said further that even if God chooses not to deliver them, they would not bow down to the image nor serve Nebuchadnezzar's gods. Verses 19 to 20 say the king was enraged at their response and commanded the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and he commanded that the Hebrew young men be bound and cast into the burning fiery furnace verses 21 to 22 say that they were thrown in the furnace with all their belongings and all their clothing and because the furnace was so hot the command was also hasty the strong men who threw them in the furnace were instantaneously killed. And this is the part that I want to get to. In verses 23 through to 25, we are told that the young men fell down bound in the midst of the furnace. But when Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace... He could not believe his eyes. He could not believe what he was seeing. And so he asked one of his counselors, didn't we throw three men bound into the midst of the fire? They responded by saying, yes, O king. And verse 25, he responded and says, look, I see four men loose walking around in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. I want to tell somebody today that you're not going to burn. I want to submit to somebody who is listening to me right now, who is watching in real time, that you're not gonna burn. These young men were thrown in the fire with the expectation that they would burn, that they would die, and that their voice and witness would be silenced. But the Bible tells us that Jesus did not leave them to burn. He came down from heaven. He stepped into 
into that furnace um, and he neutralized the fire. The fire did not burn them. Uh, it only burned the ropes that had them bound. Uh, many of you like these young men um, may have been thrown in the fire and expected to burn and die. Uh, but God says uh, you're not going to burn uh, because he's with you. Uh, in the fire the only thing that will burn is what binds you can i submit to you today the only thing that will burn are the things that have you bound many of you have some ropes that have you bound people may have tied you up like a calf at the stall to bind you, to keep you, to hold you back, to prevent your progress. But God says you're not going to burn. It's the rope that's going to burn you. Many of you may be bound by ropes of poverty. The rope will burn. Many of you will be are probably bound by ropes of depression. The rope is going to burn, but you're not going to burn. Many of you may be bound by some ropes of financial luck you're not gonna burn but the ropes themselves will burn many of you may be bound by some ropes of childhood trauma and abuse that are still affecting you to this day God can still burn those ropes many of you are still bound by some ropes of the lack of opportunities you are bound by some ropes of financial embarrassment you are bound by some ropes of toxic relationships you will not burn but the ropes are gonna burn can i submit to somebody that when you are thrown in the fire for your faith in god jesus will be with you in the fire and he'll ensure that you don't burn but the ropes that have you bound the ropes that are restricting your movement they are what's gonna burn you're not gonna burn verse 27 tells us that the satraps the prefects the governors and the king's counselors gathered together and they saw that the fire had no not any power over the bodies of these young men the bible says the hair of their heads uh, were not singed their cloaks were not harmed nor even the smell of fire had come upon them you see, brothers and sisters, irrespective of uh, uh, the fire that you may be in or you may have uh, been thrown in to be destroyed. Because God is with you in the fire. It's not going to burn you. It's the things that have you bound that will burn you. And when you come out of the fire... Your hair will not be singed. Your clothes will not burn. Not even the smell of smoke will be on you. Some of you are in some fire right now. Some of you may be going through some stuff right now. When God takes you through it, people can't believe you've been through so much hell. You've endured so much fire because of what he has done in your life and the way he has kept you. Some of you have been in some fires that should have caused you to lose your minds. But irrespective of all that heat, irrespective of all that fire, irrespective of all that mess you put up with you went through you are still in your right mind some of you are in some environments that should have chewed you up spit you out and walk all over you brothers and sisters that should have left you broken battered bruised and can't even pick up the pieces but God has worked some miracles in your life he has so kept you and protected you through it all that people can't believe 
you went through those stuff. You were thrown in those fire. The Bible tells us when they came out of the fire, there's no evidence that they actually went in a fire. And that's because God was with them in that fire. You are not going to burn because Jesus is with you in the fire. The fire of the presence of God will neutralize any fire that you may be in, brothers and sisters. I'm not a fireman. But I have enough sense to observe that fire cannot burn fire. Fire neutralizes fire. Are you listening to me? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 says, Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord. And in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, John said to the disciples, I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me, Jesus Christ, he is a mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see, brothers and sisters, fire neutralizes fire. The fire of the presence of God in your life, the fire of the word of God, and the fiery baptism of the spirit of God will neutralize the fires that you may be in. You're not going to burn. Many of you may be in some fiery marriages and relationships right now. You're not going to burn. Many of you may be in some fires of depression right now. You're not going going to burn. Many of you may be facing some suicidal fires right now. You're not going to burn. Many of you may be in some fires, especially the COVID-19 fire, even making things worse for you. You're not going to burn because the fire of God in your life will neutralize any fire that you are in. You're not going to burn. Because Jesus is with you in the fire. If he had left you on your own, just like the strong men who threw those three young men in, you would have burned instantaneously. The furnace is so hot. The furnace is blazing. You would have been uh, uh, roasted and incinerated instantaneously just like they were. But because God is with you, but because his fiery word is in you, and his spirit has baptized you, he neutralizes the fires around you. You're not gonna burn. And just in case you're still not convinced, as I close, here's what God personally says in Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 2 to Israel. And this promise is for us today. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not because I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Yes, Pastor Smallwood, you belong to God. Yes, Sister Madeline, you belong to him. Yes, Brother Penny and Sister Thompson and everyone else who are watching, you belong to God. You can inject your name right here God says you are mine and therefore you have no reason to fear now here's the sweet part here's the sweet part brothers and sisters he says when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you go through the rivers they should not overwhelm you here's the exciting ending and when you walk through the fire hallelujah 
I'm going through some fire right now. I'm in some fires right now. You may be in some fires right now, but the word of God encourages us. The word of God lets us know that when you walk through the fire, when you pass through the fire, when you are thrown in the fire, you shall not burn and the flames will not kindle upon you. You're not going to burn. Say it like you mean it, saints. Say it like you understand it. Claim it over your life. Claim it over your marriage. Claim it over your children. Claim it over your finances. Claim it over your church congregation. Claim it over your ministry. You're not going to burn. God says when you pass through the fire, you're not going to burn. If you're thrown in the fire, you're not going to burn. The flames will not kindle upon you because God is with you and the fire of his presence, the fire of his word, the fire of the Holy Ghost will neutralize every fire that you're in. You're not going to burn. I'm not going to lose my mind irrespective of the stress and the trauma. I'm not going to lose myself irrespective of, of the hardships and the persecutions and the criticisms. You're not going to burn. I'm not going to burn. Irrespective of the financial lack. You're not going to burn. Irrespective of the difficulties, you're not going to burn. You may be jobless and laid off right now. You're not going to burn. COVID-19 may be a constant nagging threat. You're not going to burn. Falling, persecutions, hardships, and constantly fluctuating in your spirituality may seem to be sucking out the very Every connection and lifeblood you have. I submit to you today under the power of God's word. You're not gonna burn. You may be lonely, longing for companionship, longing for close relationships, but it don't seem to be coming right now. And you may be tempted to do some ungodly stuff. Let me close by reminding you you're not gonna burn. Things may be hard in your life right now. The marriage may seem to be on the brink of destruction and dissolution. God says you're not going to burn. The finances may be terrible right now to the point that you can't pay the bills. You can't take care of the kids. You can't go out. You can't eat. You're embarrassed. But let me encourage you, my brother, my sister. You're not going to burn. Things may be rough in the church, in the body of Christ, left, right, and center. People may be renouncing the faith. Atheists may be attacking the faith. Immorality may be among us that is causing some problems and some fire. But this church, the body of Christ, is built on Jesus Christ. It's not going to burn. The fire may be overwhelming. It may be erupting like a volcano. It may seem like a dead me dead now, as we would say, uh, in the Jamaican parlance. It may seem like there's no way I'm going to come out of this alive. It may seem like this is it for me. This is the end of me. But God says to you this morning, God is encouraging me this morning. You're not going to burn. The fire may be blazing. The fire may be hot. The flames may be roaring. It may seem very daunting, but I submit to you, you're not gonna burn the persecutions 
are not going to burn you. Those who are bringing you down and tearing you down is not going to burn you. The, the consistent nagging lack is not going to burn you. The hardships and the trials is not going to burn you. The frictions will not burn you. The uncertainties will not burn you. You're not going to burn. Government sanctions are not going to burn you the lockdowns are not gonna burn you friends may be cutting you off and people turning their backs on you they got you in all sorts of fires but God says this morning be encouraged my child be strong hold firm because I'm with you in the fire and my presence will neutralize the fire you're not gonna burn you're not gonna burn because god is with you in the fire you're not gonna burn you're not gonna burn and when you come out it won't even look like you went through any fire because your clothing will not be touched. Your headgear will not be touched. Your hair will not be singed and not even the smell of fire will latch on to you because God is with you in the fire. You're not going to burn. You're not going to burn. If you received this word, brothers and sisters, type amen, type hallelujah, type I'm not going to burn in the chat. Say it like you mean it. Claim this over your life. You're not going to burn because God is with you in the fire. And the fire of the presence of God is able to neutralize any and every fire that you may be in. As I close, brothers and sisters, let me say a special prayer for you. And those of you who are just coming on who may want to watch the entire thing from the start, as soon as I end it, feel free to watch it from the start. But God bless you and God keep you. You're not going to burn. The fire may be daunting. You're not going to burn. Me say you're not going to burn. You're not going to burn because God is with you in the fire. Let me pray for you as I, as I close. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for this beautiful day. I thank you for your blessings, your keeping. I thank you, O oh God, for... This story and experience in Daniel chapter 3. These young men who were taken from their comfortable home and environment. Their names changed. Their, their, their loyalty and devotion. They intended to change them. But they, they remained firm and strong in you, O oh God. They faced persecution. They faced a fire for holding firm to their faith in you. And God, they were thrown in the fire. Their enemies intended to kill them, to destroy them, to roast them, to incinerate them. But oh God, because they remained firm in you, strong in you, they kept their faith and fidelity to you. You were very present with them in the fire. And therefore the fire couldn't burn them. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now who are watching, who are listening, who would have received this word. They may be going through a lot of fires right now. There may be some fi financial fires, marital fires, family fires, job, all sorts of fires, mental fires, health issues, all kinds of fires in their lives. And oh God, it may be so overwhelming. The heat may be so hot, it may seem like they're about to be roasted. They're about to get cremated by the fire. But I pray, oh God, that you encourage them this morning. That you strengthen them. That you keep them and let them know that irrespective of the blazing heat around them and the roaring flames. 
They're not going to burn because you are with them in the fire. And so, God, I pray for each and every one here and their families and the situations that they may be in. May they be encouraged. May they be reassured of your presence with them, of your love for them. To know that irrespective of the fires they're in, they're not going to burn. Bless and keep them, O God. Protect them, provide for them, and keep their hope and faith alive in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless Uno. God bless y'all. Who watch locally, overseas, wherever you are, God bless you. And I pray that the word of God today was a blessing and encouragement to you. And you're not going to burn. Take good care. I'll see y'all some other time. I have another preaching engagement tonight um, on one of my friends. Um, Minister Keith Evans from the Bahamas' um, channel. So hopefully uh, you should see it on my page as well. Um, but until then, have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Be blessed now. Spend some quality time with your family. Get something good to eat. And be encouraged by the word of God. You're not going to burn. Have a wonderful one, everyone. And those of you who came on at the tail end, you can watch the, the playback when I end this live. Big up yourself, uh, Pastor Smallwood, Sister Marva, uh, 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 Gail, Bev, Uriah. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for, for joining me. And I'm glad that the word of God was a blessing to you.